Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Uh, today I want to talk about CRISPR therapeutics and YSI and their treatment for type 1 diabetes. I'll be talking about what causes type 1 diabetes and uh, how it is different from type 2. I'm going to talk about the origins of VCTX210. I'm going to talk to talk to you about the size of the diabetes uh, type 1 diabetes market and I'm also going to talk about the competition for VCTX210. Many are in the third uh, phase of uh, clinical trials. So that's what you'll get when you watch this video to the end. So with that said, I would like to caution you that uh, I'm going through an allergy again today. It seems I'm allergic to ash group of trees uh, and their pollen. I'm also allergic, it seems, to mulberry uh, and maple. And living in Canada, being allergic to maple pollen is... Uh, uh, a very difficult uh, ordeal and uh, so I might be wheezing in between I'll try to avoid that uh, but if I do uh, please accept my apologies in advance that said let's get started <laughs> Welcome back friends. First let's uh, understand type 1 diabetes. I'll be very brief. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition in which the immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the insulin producing cells in the pancreas. The exact cause of this autoimmune response is not fully understood but it is believed to involve a combination of uh, genetic and environmental factors. Certain genes make individuals more susceptible to developing type 1 diabetes and it is thought that the exposure to certain viruses or other environmental triggers may play a role in triggering the autoimmune attack on the pancreas. As a result, the pancreas is unable to produce sufficient insulin, a hormone necessary for regulating blood sugar levels. People with type 1 diabetes require lifelong insulin therapy to manage their blood sugar levels effectively. Type 1 diabetes is very different from type 2 diabetes, which happens not because the body is not producing insulin, but because the cells are insulin resistant and insensitive to the rising level of insulin in the body. Today we uh, talk about VCTX210, which is the most advanced type 1 uh, diabetes therapy as it pertains to progress within the clinical trials that are happening in Canada for CRISPR therapeutics and Viacite. The phase 1 clinical trial investigating safety and tolerability of VCTX210 for the treatment of type 1 diabetes, uh, the first generation allogenic gene edited stem cell derived product uh, has completed uh, dosing. I think the dosing started in uh, late 2022 and the dosing is complete. The VCTX210 tile was designed to demonstrate the safety of implanting devices containing the stem cell derived uh, cells into patients. Following the previously announced uh, clearance of clinical trial application or as we call it in Canada CTA uh, by Health Canada for VCTX211 which is the next generation, a phase one of two clinical trial of VCTX211 has been initiated and enrollment and dosing are ongoing. VCTX211 is an investigational allogenic gene edited stem cell derived product candidate for type 1 diabetes which originated under the CRISPR therapeutics and Viacite collaboration. In the third quarter of 2022, Vertex announced it had acquired Viacite. Now, Vertex, Viacite and CRISPR have become a powerhouse when it comes to type 1 and type 2 diabetes. VCTX210 is an investigational allogenic uh, gene edited stem cell derived product developed in collaboration uh, by applying the CRISPR therapeutics gene editing technology to Viacite's proprietary stem cell capabilities for the creation or generation of pancreatic cells designed to evade uh, recognition by the immune system. This immune evasive cell replacement therapy is designed to enable patients to produce their own insulin. Around early February 2022, CRISPR Therapeutics and Viacite dosed the first subject in the phase 1 clinical trial of VCTX210. Let me take you back to 2022 when we used to be able to see the image of the implant device. Strangely these days we do not get to see this image. I am using it to show the concept of what Viacite had started with. As you can see in this uh, the graphic. I pulled it up from some historical records so uh, we can't see this anymore in uh, either Viacite or uh, even for that matter in CRISPR's uh, website. Uh, this is the en encapsulation device that they used to display earlier. It contains uh, the pluripotent stem cell derived pancreatic endoderm cells which they call as PEC01 and uh, it's uh, implanted subcutaneously and this device is called PEC01 device 
and that goes into the type 1 diabetes uh, patient's uh, uh, body uh, just under the skin and uh, it produces insulin and it uh, allows the insulin to get into the blood vessels so that's the general uh, theory uh, uh, on which uh, this particular device was working but the main concern was that as soon as it is implanted into the human body uh, the human immune uh, system will go and kill all the all the pec uh, cells and uh, the patient will be back to the original uh, status and uh, in order to address that uh, issue uh, vertex uh, uh, i mean viasat joined with uh, crispr therapeutics uh, so that uh, uh, crispr uh, technology can be used to genetically modify the cells so that they can evade uh, immune, uh, human immune system and persist longer in the body so that's how the collaboration was born then the question is uh, where is crispr right now with vctx210 trials the phase 1 was dosed in 2022 and as per fda records the study completion date was april 2023 so friends we should either expect some positive catalyst news from crispr or uh, brace for setback which one will it be i don't know we'll find out very soon enough In the University of Alberta study, the trial saw 17 adults with type 1 diabetes at six centers in Canada, the United States, and Europe receive implants of pluripotent stem cell-derived pancreatic endoderm cells, and each patient received implants of several small uh, permeable devices filled with millions of cells each, and the cells were derived from stem cells that chemically transformed into uh, stem cells programmed to become islet cells. Uh, this was the first in-human clinical trial to report early signs that pancreatic cells grown from stem cells can be safely implanted and in some cases begin to produce insulin. Of the 17 patients who received implants, University of Alberta researchers said 35% showed signs in their blood of insulin production after meals within 6 months of the implant. on top of that 63% had evidence of insulin production inside the implant devices when they were removed after a year the scientists said that uh, they can see uh, in about 65% of devices that they took out from under the skin of the uh, participants that there were human insulin producing cells surviving and in about a third of patients they had measurable insulin levels in the blood stream so it was really a good first start with this treatment the ultimate goal of the new research is to develop an unlimited supply of islet cells that can be safely transplanted without the need for anti rejection drugs why is its collaboration with crispr therapeutics is to engineer the cells to become invisible to human immune system and thus allow it to perform its job this collaboration is the background of vctx210 so what is the current status of vctx210 as per the 2022 full year earnings uh, release on february 21 2023 the phase 1 clinical trial investigating safety and tolerability of vctx210 for treatment of type 1 diabetes The first generation allogeneic gene edited stem cell derived product candidate has completed dosing. The VCTX210 trial was designed to demonstrate the safety of implanting devices containing the stem cell derived cells into patients. We'll watch out for the results and I'll bring it to you as soon as I get as soon as I get any information. CRISPR has also added that having successfully cleared the clinical trial application by Health Canada for VCTX211, a phase one of two clinical trial of VCTX211 has been initiated and enrollment and dosing are ongoing. In the third quarter of 2022, Vertex announced it had acquired Viasite. Here is how the competition is shaping up for type 1 diabetes. The first one is Ladarixin. Uh, this is a, a new type 1 diabetes medication for oral administration which is currently in phase 3 clinical trial and study is expected to be complete by june 2024 next up is uh, shanghai jiangtong university school of medicine which is working on early high dose vitamin d and residual i2 cell uh, function in pediatric type 1 diabetes using the drug uh, using the drug uh, colecalciferol uh, 400 unit which is currently in phase 3 of clinical trial and study is expected to be complete by december 2024 next up is uh, teplizumab uh, prevention bio inc prevention bio inc is uh, doing a study on evaluating the efficacy and safety of biological teplizumab in type 1 diabetes currently this is in phase 3 of clinical trials and is expected to complete by may 2023 So every time now we should hear about this and I'll bring the news to you the G- uh, JDRF as well as firms like uh, Thermalin Diabetes Glycostasis etc are researching on developing smart insulin which is a type of insulin that is meant to stay in the blood stream 
for a long period of time and activate when the blood glucose levels rise. This technology would eliminate the need for blood glucose testing and make diabetic patients' lives easier. Currently, there are two options exist, developing an insulin molecule uh, that has been chemically modified to be reactive to glucose or encapsulating insulin within a glucose reactive material. So these are the two approaches. In my opinion of these, the JDRF approach can provide a competition to VCTX210 if successful. The type 1 diabetes market size in the US is valued at around US dollar 7.59 billion in 2022 and is projected to reach 13.64 billion US dollars by 2030 with a growing compounded annual growth rate of 7.6% over the forecast period of 2023 to 2030. In 2021, diabetes affected 537 million individuals globally, mostly between the ages of 20 and 79. Type 1 diabetes is a chronic condition in which the, in which the pancreas generates little or no insulin. It's uh, most uh, commonly diagnosed in children and teenagers, although it can affect adults. Type 1 diabetes is less common than type 2 diabetes. About 5 to 10% of diabetes patients have type 1 diabetes. So that's the story about type 1 diabetes and the therapies that are being uh, prepared for it. And of course, our focus was more on VCTX210, which is a joint collaboration with the, between CRISPR Therapeutics and Viasite. I'll bring you more information about this at, as I get more and more information uh, through the news releases. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. So this is another reason for us to be bullish about uh, CRISPR therapeutics because very soon we'll get some uh, positive information, hopefully, about the phase one uh, clinical trial results for VCTX210. And uh, very much uh, just behind it is VCTX211 uh, in the phase one clinical trial. So with that, I would like to bring this video to an end. Uh, and I'll catch up with you again uh, in the next video. Bye for now.